ancient, ancient event. It's time. It's here. Origin of Shadow is here. And this does mean that we are going to be taking a look at everything relating to this event. I'm going to be giving you some general tips on what you should be focusing on doing and how to actually get things out of this event. But very quickly, before I go through all of the guides and everything, I will just say quickly that it does appear that this event has been made slightly more difficult than Divine Fest, but this is going to be more or less very similar to the Divine event that we had with the Divine Altars, but now we have Ancient Altars with these new Ancient Dragons in them, and we also have a Dragon Board event, which we've seen Dragon Board events before, we've seen Altars before, but we're going to have to go through every single bit and piece of this event one by one. Of course, we also do have Ancient Chests, which we need to open these to get Holy Talismans out of these chests. And if you are curious about the drop rates, these are on the wiki right now. There is a 44% chance of getting one Talisman, 47% of getting three, 8% chance of getting five Talismans, and just a 1% chance of getting 50 Talismans. So yes, the drop rates have been changed and nerfed because now we can only get times five instead of times 10 in that slot. And if you do want to check the overall drop rates, you can just click on the ancient chest info in the little eye and it shows average number of rewards per 100 ancient chests opened. And it says that you should expect 275 holy talismans per every 100 ancient chests, which means that on average, if you want to get one of the dragons out of the altar, it's going to cost about 550 to 600 chest opens on average. So 550 to 600 chests is what it's going to cost to get Merka, for example. But anyway, moving on to the actual dragons that are in this event. You can see that the major reward dragons out of this are part of the Glom Rising collection because Glom is the major reward for this event being an ancient divine and shadow dragon which means he has very very high stats, he's by far the strongest dragon in this event. That doesn't mean you want to put him in your team necessarily. But in order to get Glom we need to collect every other shadow ancient out of this event, which consists of Raisk, which is in that ancient altar. Then we've got Merka, who's also in the ancient altar. And again, 550 to 600 chests on average to get him. And then the final ancient that we'll need to get is Hausk, who is the dragon board reward dragon. So you progress on the dragon board and we'll open chests in there as well, and then get pieces of Hausk or Horsk. I, I don't know. I kind of like saying Horsk because it makes me think he's a horse. But anyway, those are the major rewards. But on top of that, we do have a couple of other ancients that are available during this event. Mainly Artoba being the first one here because Artoba is available for the first two weeks in the ancient altar. And then at the end of the two weeks, Artoba will no longer be available and it will change over to Homala. And Homala is actually a dragon that a lot of players will probably want to get their hands on because Homala is an ancient water and light dragon. And you know, water, super, super important for dungeon. Light is also super important for dungeon. So Homala is probably the dragon that I would recommend for, especially if you don't have a single ancient or divine, you should probably be going for Homala. If you can also get Glom, that would be fantastic, but I think it's a better idea for you to save up all of your event currency, and if you are going to pick an Ancient, Homala should probably be your main priority. But that is the general rundown of these new Ancient Dragons that have come in this event. We do have some other dragons that have come up in this event as well. For example, in the Dragon Board, we've got Umbra, who is the Double Trouble Reward Dragon. That's going to take a while to get. Warg is the Epic Dragon out of the Dragon Board event. Meliashawn becomes available after you've got Warg. We've got Molten, who's the Bingo Dragon right now. And then Molim is also available after you've unlocked Housk. So if you manage to get Housk, then you can get pieces for Molim, which is going to be my only chance to get him as well. But 
I guess that is enough about the introductions. We are going to be doing some Dragon Board questing and progressing on the Dragon Board in a second. But first of all, I do want to open up some of these ancient chests. Because in these ancient chests, again, we can get Neobone, we can get Hellion, Ike Therna, and we can get pieces for the new legendary Shade Brute Dragon. And so you'll want to get these dragons because a couple of them are part of collections. For example, Ike Therna is part of the current Indigo collection. So I guess we'll just open the tickets that I've got right now. Because why not? I've got 57 of them. Shall we see how my luck goes? But let's have a look. Again, on average, you should expect about 2.7 talismans every time you open up. But every time you get, geez, a times 50 immediately, this is what happened last time. But every time you get a times 50 and a times 5, that's going to put you slightly above the average drops. So um, every times 50 is very, very, very helpful. Seriously, it is going to be really important to uh, open up as many chests as you can. Pray to RN Jesus that they give you those times 50 drops. But I do really want to get my hands on that new Shade Brute dragon. And aside from that, I'm not really too fussed about any other dragons out of these chests. It's mainly just collecting the talismans. So again, we open up these chests here. We get the rewards, like we get the talismans. Another times 50. Oh my goodness. We can get really cool looking decorations, which they're pretty pog. And then you'll get some extra food, some extra gold. So for brand new players, this is a really, really good way to get bonus gold and food. So make sure you're opening up these chests, which you should be anyway, to try and get the talismans. But, you know, the food in that is very, very helpful as well. Then I'll claim these last seven chests and I'm going to leave the others in the top right for now. Not going to claim those bonus ones. And then we open up all of these and how many holy talismans do we have if we click the ancient altar you'll see that out of those 57 chests i got 215 holy talismans which is really a really good ratio but 215 holy talismans is nowhere near enough to unlock any of these dragons because if you click get pieces you'll see that to get all 500 pieces of an ancient, you'll need 1500 holy talismans, which is a lot. 1500 per dragon It is more expensive than it was during Divine Fest, so keep that in mind. But if you want to be able to get more tickets to get pieces of these altar ancients, then you're going to have to do the various events that are happening during the month, but mainly it is the bottomless dungeon. Because when you go in the dungeon, every single chest that you open up is going to be giving tickets, and this is the primary way that you're going to get bonus tickets throughout this event, opening up that purple multi-open chest as many times as you possibly can every week. That is how you get more tickets. So, every six hours, log in for your dungeon resets, you might need to gem a few dungeon resets as well to get the altar dragons, but that is everything really that you should need to know about getting the ancient altar dragons. But of course, that's just one part of this event. The other major part is the dragon board event, and uh, we've got the quests to do just like we do with castle events and the other events in DML. Collect food, collect gold, breed dragons, feed dragons, win battles, catch creatures. And for breeding, luckily, a really good combo is just the war dragon combo, which is just fire plus metal. Super simple. If you're used to doing that, you can just keep doing it and it will give you the points that you need. Food, I typically put in six hour food in the form of squarey berries. You can also use spring cherries as well. But six hour food keeps you on pace with the reset timers, which is why I use it. Feeding dragons, super easy. We're going to hatch this dragon and then feed him up. And you'll see that we get given event currency. Those little shadowy, purpley currency bits. So we're going to do that, level him up, sell him because we don't need him anymore. And we're just going to do that for every single quest on this board event. Breeding dragons, again, can be... 
the most annoying one because especially if you don't time your hatcheries and breeding dens properly you may get stuck but I do have Kronos available so if you do have any Kronos time skips they can get you out of some really sticky situations when it comes to trying to collect event currency during this but come on Kronos hurry your butt up and then again I'm going to breed these two together what do we get of course it's gonna be war <laughs> it's never not gonna be war but in my second breeding den, which I also could have used for this uh, breeding timer, I'm actually having to breed Xylophone because Xylophone is part of the Blue Bonanza collection. And he's the only one out of these three that I don't have a duplicate of. So if I want Indigo, which I do, I need to have all three of these dragons. So that's why I'm breeding for Xylophone in my second den. Because why not? Oh, there we go, Pog! You, you ask and you shall receive me. Okay, I'm feeling pretty lucky now. So uh, that means I should be able to get Indigo by hatching the other two guys as well. Very epic gaming. But anyway, coming back to this, the only quest that we've got le left is winning battles, which we could either do that in the arena, or what we can also do is if you've got instant win tickets, you can use those, but you can do fights in the normal map. You can do fights in heroic mode. Normally it's a better idea to use your instant win tickets if you've got any in heroic mode. But obviously free to play players will not have instant win tickets. So just do the highest level boss that you can on the map. That's normally the best thing to do. If you've run out of arena energy that is. But let's go and get all of our pointies. I've, I've actually stopped counting. Damn it, I don't know where I'm up to. There we go. So... I've done all of these quests, and now when you finish all six of the quests, you unlock a special bonus quest, and this quest is random, and this is the reason why I do this first, before I even touch anything else in the Dragon Board event. So now I've done all six, it says open one epic chest in the Dragon Board event, and then we'll get a bonus 600 event currency. So it's very, very important that you finish off every single quest every six hours to get the bonus quest. Trust me, it is like integral to this event that you add those bonus 600 points in every reset. So we just need to open up an epic chest. But now we've got the dragon board to get into, which is an entirely different pain <laughs> in its own right. And I really want to try and get a six. If I can re-roll to get a 6, then we can hit this, for example. This is just an example since I don't have a purple key already. But if you go for a 6, then you'll get double the keys for the tile that you land on. So, for example, you could already have one purple key. And then if you get a 6 and you land on a purple tile, you'll get two more keys. And then you'll be able to open up an extra purple chest. So, um, that is one of the main ways that people get extra chests out of this event but if you are brand new to the dragon board it's probably going to be a lot to take in initially um you'll see that i just got doubles on my dice which has actually unlocked chapter one in the double trouble battles and so now we have to go into a fight because we've unlocked this battle. So roll pairs to fill up the double trouble meter and make the story unfold. So, oh yeah, wake up. I don't think we're in Numa anymore. Ugh, just five more minutes. I haven't finished digesting all the pie I ate last night at the Feast of Rebirth. He said, w w wake up, fool. We're in real trouble here. We can save the digesting for later. Oh, the human is not dead. That's a little disappointing. Nonsense, I know these little humans, they'll be much more entertaining alive for now. Come, let's give them a customary ghoul gourd and treat them to a customary battle. Okay, kind of based. And my goodness, how, how high is their level? I definitely should have put the divines first, but I think we're okay. <laughs> yeah, the double trouble battles are balanced towards your team, which, um can be terrible if you don't have an evenly leveled team. So this is the reason why having even leveled dragons is important for both tr double trouble and the dungeon. But you see I've done chapter one, so now if we want to unlock chapter two we've got to get another double. 
which is random. It depends on what your dice or dice, yeah, dice land on. So you can't really change that. You've just the more that you roll the dice, the more opportunities you have to get doubles. That's more or less how it works. But so you'll see we roll the dice and then we land on the specific tile that correlates to that number. So like we've opened up a blue chest there, we get some bonus currency. Like we roll a five and then we go five tiles ahead, which is there. And that's basically how this event works. Simple if you've ever played like board games or anything before, which I imagine most of us have. But we're going to get to this green tile here. And one thing about these green tiles that you really need to pay attention to is their relation to the bingo board, which is another part of this event. Because if you want to finish off the bingo, which you should try and do as many rows and columns in the bingo as you can because it gives bonus event currency, it gives tickets, and if you need molten, it gives you pieces for him too. And so, because the green tiles, there's only three of them, Actually, two of them, not three of them, sorry. There's two of them and then there's the main goal point. But since there's only two green tiles for every lap, you need to be landing on the green tiles every time. And realistically, you need to get one of the bingo numbers that you haven't hit yet. So, for example, I hit this green tile earlier, but for this green tile, we want to hit a 2, 1, 4, 5, or 3, which means for the dices that, dices that I'm going to roll, since I'm only three tiles away, I need to either hit the green on a three, a two, or a one. Which makes sense, right? And it sucks that we got a six there. But, now that I've got a two, what I can do is re-roll that six. We got another two, that's not what I wanted. There we go. So now we've got a two and a one, which means what do I want to land on the green with? Either the two or the one. I'm going to go one and then two. Because I think the one is... Uh, gonna come up more often than the two is when we're trying to land on there and so because we've got three keys and we open up a chest we open up this ancient chest and we get a piece of house i believe that we can still get big big drops of house out of this so you can get really really lucky and get big pieces of him but the other thing to remember when you're opening up these chests is that if you open up 220 of these ancient chests, like we just open one here. If you open up 220 of them, you are guaranteed to get Housk in number 220. Which means that you're not just going to be re-rolling and trying to get pieces of him forever. Eventually, you are going to be guaranteed Housk, which is good. Is good in theory, but still takes a lot, a lot of grinding and event doing to even get to that point but i have to say baby house is so cute i really prefer him to his adult form you know his, his adult form is kind of weird and creepy i think that's on purpose but like he's so cute that's just me though maybe that is just me but again we landed on a six here to get double purple keys and you really should be trying to focus on getting as many ancient chests as you can in this time frame. And again, we've landed on two, and for hitting the white tile, we will get another key. Sorry, I can pick another purple key. We can open up another ancient chest. So now we're at two pieces of house. But since we've just completed a lap, we also get to open up a chest of every single kind. So every single lap that you do, you'll get three chests, one of the rare, one of the epic, and one of the ancient chest. So you get to see what you get out of it. So we got event currency, five pieces of warg, and one piece of house. So then we get some re-rolls back, free re-rolls, which again, you can use your re-rolls to land on the specific tiles and bingo numbers that you want, but you only get three of them. You've got to be quite sparing with their usage. Very careful, but, you know, sometimes you'll do a, a lap on this map, like the Dragon Board, and you might get super lucky. You might land on every purple tile without having to re-roll. You might be completely fine, but that doesn't always happen. 
And so in this situation here, I really want to hit this green tile and this green tile, for example. But if we wanted to try and go for the purple tiles and actually get a purple chest, unfortunately here we've already hit a six on the green tile, which means that we don't want to be landing on another six on the green tile if we could help it. But then again, we might end up wasting a lot of currency when we're tr if we decide to go for a one and a three to hit these purples. So it is tough to make the decision sometimes, but obviously if we had a calculator and calculated all of the drop chances, you could work out what would be a better option, either just ignoring the bingo hit for one of the green tiles or not. I'm not too concerned with hitting another six on here because I'm not too worried about hitting the full house. But if you do need to hit the full house, you've really got to pay attention to not skipping these green tiles when you can help it. So we've got our six and now I just need to land on a four. Is it a four? No, it's not a four, is it? Is it a two? It's a two that I need. Sorry, I'm... I'm, I'm mentally deranged, apparently. Why do I think that was a four? I don't know. Of course it was going to be a two. But there we go. I landed on that. Uh, it's a six, so that we, we can get double keys again. We can open up another chest. And this is how I've managed to get ancients before from the board. This is how other people managed to get ancients from the board. So uh, I guess all I can say is good luck. I hope that you get some nice drops and that the dragon board is nice to you. But make sure that you save currency and don't just spend all of it. Because when you save currency, you will be able to do the bonus quest. And you should be always be trying to do those bonus quests. So don't just waste all of your currency. At least give yourself, I'd say, 1500 spare. I wouldn't really want to spend below that. So uh, that's my advice to you anyway. Don't forget we also have milestone rewards, which when you hit certain milestones for spending event currency in the dragon board you will unlock certain things so for example you can get pieces of race you can get pieces of shade brute and obviously if you buy the premium side you can get kelp you can get the track dragon and the main one that a lot of people bought it for was for mr chevalier and in these milestones, of course, we've also got sacred apples, which there's one in the pay only section, and there is one in the free to play section at 269,000 stepping stones spent. Not stepping stones, that's dungeon. Shadow currency is probably what I'm going to call it. But that is the gist of Dragon Board as well. So. Those are the two main parts of this event, but we will get mini events and like, for example, Blue Bonanza, we're going to get collection events and things that come up as well, which, speaking of which, I should probably throw one of those eggs into my hatchery right now. Who should I throw it? I guess I will throw in my, wrong button, my duplicate molten dragon for now. I am so lucky that I have a duplicate molten because otherwise having to do that bingo every day and get the full house, especially in the first week, is really, really not going to be easy. So if you are going for him, very best of luck to you. You're going to need it. <laughs> You're definitely going to need it. But anyway, for now, that is the rundown of this ancient event. Obviously, I've not gone into every single detail and little tidbit ever because I've gone through it before. But if you are a new player and you do need any other help or advice, I'm sure I'm going to be bringing out more videos related to the Ancient event. And then there's Dungeon, obviously. There's all the tips relating to Dungeon. But if you do have any other questions, you know, you can join the Discord server and people ask questions and share progress and everything like that all the time. So that's a good place to get a lot of advice. Oh, I've accidentally cloned my game. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. But the wiki links will also help you quite a lot. And if you do want any other advice or general tidbits, you know, watching some of the 
previous videos I uploaded from, say, the Divine Fest might be able to give you more of an idea of how, you know, the spending of the talismans works and the collecting of the talismans, because that part of the event is very similar to the Shadow Altar. And then the Dragon Board from the past Ancient Events is going to be similar to this one as well. Not exactly the same, and the numbers are slightly different now, but, you know, there's all this videoing from the past that if you haven't seen it it might help you but anyway for now good luck i do wish you the best and uh i hope to see you again soon